Yuji breaks Sukuna's soul and speaks directly to Megumi. Yuta unleashes Sukuna's own technique against him. A new warrior joins the battle. Man, we are truly in the end game now. Jujutsu Kaisen is coming to an epic conclusion more quickly than we all expected and we need to talk about it right now. You guys know how this works if you enjoy my JJK videos, you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like and comment for that YouTube algorithm. And a huge thank you to all of you for over 2 million subscribers here on the channel. It is hard to even imagine that that is real, so thank you again so much. Now in the previous chapter we learned important information about how Yuta's domain actually works. We also learned that its name is officially translated as Authenticity in Mutual Love, which I'm sure sounds a lot cooler in Japanese. Basically, Yuta can choose one of the techniques he has copied in the past and turn it into a sure hit attack within the domain. All the other techniques that he has copied and stockpiled in the past then take the form of different katana swords within the domain. When he picks up a katana, Yuta is able to use the technique that is stored up within that katana, but even he doesn't know which technique it is until he touches the sword. Also, after he uses the technique, the sword gets kind of used up and disappears. But there are an infinite number of swords inside the domain that Yuta can turn to after one of them disappears. In his own like internal monologue, Sukuna acknowledged that he has been seriously weakened by his fight with Gojo, and he currently still can't use his domain. On top of that, his reverse curse technique has been weakened and his overall cursed energy output is much lower so it is currently on par with Yuta's. Normally Sukuna's cursed energy output is unmatched, so this is a big deal. Sukuna is also limited in terms of which techniques he can use. For example, he can't use the world cutting dismantle that he used on Gojo while trying to maintain Hollow Wicker Basket. So the King of Curses definitely isn't at 100% right now. He has weaknesses that can be exploited and exploiting these weaknesses is exactly what Yuji and Yuta had in mind. While Yuta is keeping Sukuna busy, Yuji is also attacking and specifically targeting Sukuna's soul in an attempt to wedge his soul away from Megumi's soul. Everything that is happening now is part of the sorcerer's master plan to both defeat Sukuna and rescue Megumi at the same time. Sukuna suspects that the final part of the plan will involve Yuta using Angel's Jacob's Ladder to forcibly eradicate Sukuna's presence from Megumi's body. The chapter ended in absolutely epic fashion as Yuta actually managed to use Sukuna's own technique, Cleave, against him. Sukuna was shocked and his body was clearly suffering some real damage as the chapter came to an end. The latest chapter finally reveals what happened to the last Sukuna finger, which has been the subject of a ton of speculation and fan theories. It turns out that Yuta was the one who took possession of that finger and he used it to copy Sukuna's curse technique. That is why he was able to use cleave against Sukuna in the previous chapter. With Sukuna actually taking some serious physical damage now, both Yuta and Yuji are going all out against him in hand to hand combat. They're punching him, kicking him, Yuji straight up knees him in the face, but even with all of that, Sukuna isn't beaten. He's still fighting back, and at one point he seems to choke Yuji so hard that Yuji spits a bunch of blood into Sukuna's face. Now was that blood spitting just a coincidence? Something that just happened unexpectedly during the course of the battle? Of course not, but more on that later. Rika is of course also involved in this battle against Sukuna, so keep in mind that it's really more like a 3v1 than a 2v1 and all three of them are now attacking Sukuna at the same time. The sorcerers really believe that this is their last chance to defeat Sukuna and to rescue Megumi from Sukuna's clutches. The chapter keeps emphasizing this point, which is why it's really starting to feel like the end game for the entire series. This feels like a make or break moment where the heroes have to either win or die, and since this is a shonen, they will of course win in the end. I mean, I would hope so, right? Sukuna is now weakened because of his battle with Gojo, and he is also clearly outnumbered by the sorcerers. This is the best chance that the sorcerers will ever have to defeat Sukuna, and if they don't take him out now, he's only gonna get stronger as he continues to recover. If he does somehow recover his full strength, then all of Japan and even the entire world will be screwed. As the battle continues, Sukuna realizes that both his cursed energy output and his ability to control Megumi's body have gotten weaker. It's been a slow and grueling process, and it has cost the sorcerers multiple lives, but they are seemingly finally succeeding in wearing Sukuna down. Their plan seems to be working, the big question is only, will it work quickly enough? Sukuna decides that he has to switch up his strategy, and so he stops using Hollow Wicker Basket in order to launch a world-cutting slash at his opponents. 
However, Yuta and Yuji knew that Sukuna would try this eventually, so they start pressing Sukuna even harder, refusing to give him any time or room to maneuver. Yuta believes that Sukuna's slashes are actually getting weaker, and so he believes that it is now safer to move in even closer to Sukuna and fight him at an extremely close range. By getting close enough, Yuta is actually able to cut off one of Sukuna's arms, and that is when Yuji activates his trap card by making that blood that he spat into Sukuna's face literally explode. Yuji's ability to do this must come from the fact that he learned to use blood manipulation from Choso during his training. And so the sorcerers just keep pressuring Sukuna harder and harder. The fight is becoming more intense by the second. So you guys know what this means, right? It's time for a much less intense flashback. Thankfully though, it's just a really quick flashback. In the flashback, Yuji is explaining that two souls can be combined within one body to some extent, but they will never become one single soul. This means that Sukuna's soul is not going to blend with Megumi's and become indistinguishable from it. In other words, there is still a way to awaken Megumi's soul, separate Sukuna's soul from Megumi's body, and save Megumi's life while destroying Sukuna's soul. Hana believes that Angel's curse technique, Jacob's Ladder, is an excellent match for Yuji's plan because it has the power to negate the power of any cursed object, even a special grade cursed object like Sukuna's fingers. So, if they can use Jacob's Ladder in exactly the right moment, after Sukuna has been worn down and his control over Megumi has been weakened, this attack will provide them with the precious opportunity to wake Megumi's soul up and separate him from Sukuna once and for all. Back on the battlefield, Yuji and Rika grab Sukuna and hold him in place as Yuta launches maximum output Jacob's Ladder. Sukuna's body is burned and charred by the angelic attack, and this is Yuji's moment to shine. He runs up on Sukuna and hits him with his soul attack punch. He calls out, wake up, Fushiguro. And then, it looks like Yuji's plan worked because he is somehow able to enter the place where Megumi's soul is residing and he communicates with it directly. It seems like this is it. The sorcerers did it. They won. But after painstakingly planning out this intricate strategy and finally making contact with Megumi's soul, Yuji is faced with a major setback. Megumi's soul is indeed there, but it doesn't have the will to fight. Megumi simply says, I don't care anymore, implying that Sukuna must have somehow managed to destroy his morale and his will to live. Because of this sudden and unexpected setback, the sorcerers are caught off guard and Sukuna manages to launch a world-cutting slash right at Yuta, Rika, and Yuji. Yuta is seemingly severely injured as his entire hand seems to have been severed, and although we can't tell for sure from the panels, it's possible that his torso is about to be separated from the rest of his body, just like Gojo's was. The exact outcome of the attack is not yet clear, but we better hope that Yuta was right when he said that Sukuna's slashes have become much weaker. We better hope that Yuta will stay alive and find a way to heal himself with his advanced reverse curse technique. If not, then Yuta may be about to meet the same fate as Gojo, which would really, really suck for the sorcerers. I don't know if winning is even possible for them if they lose both Yuta and Gojo. That would be insane. Nevertheless, just when it looks like all is lost and Sukuna is about to come out on top yet again, a new challenger enters the fray. Maki infiltrates Yuta's domain because she doesn't have any cursed energy, and she is able to sneak up on Sukuna and launch a surprise attack. She runs Sukuna through from behind with her special katana. Don't forget that this weapon is literally called the Split Soul Katana, and it has the ability to directly attack someone's soul. This is like the perfect weapon for the sorcerers if they are trying to separate Sukuna's soul from Megumi. So maybe, just maybe, this attack might be the beginning of the end for Sukuna, right? Again, JJK is just massive twist after massive twist. First, we're thinking that this complex and brilliant plan by the sorcerers is about to succeed, but suddenly Sukuna turns the tables and seemingly destroys Yuta, Rika, and Yuji. But then, before we can even see the final result of Sukuna's attack, Maki shows up and runs him through with her soul-splitting sword. So what is going on now? Who is even winning? Who is going to win? This is absolute madness, man, and I freaking love it. What do you guys think? Are Yuta or Yuji about to be killed by Sukuna, or have his slashes become so weak that they can actually recover? Can Maki and her sword actually make a difference in this battle? Why did Megumi's soul seemingly give up on life, and can the sorcerers do anything to change that? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. If you're looking for an epic JJK video to watch next, check out our video explaining every special grade sorcerer and their powers. Link on screen and in the description. Drop a like on this video if you enjoy our JJK content and you want to see more in the future. And again, thank you so much for over 2 million subscribers. That is literally 
insane. 